Uh, today we are going to play with the um, troubleshooting. Yeah, troubleshooting. Uh, the most common problem is the customer complaint, no raw water coming out. Possibilities for no raw water. The Correct. System. The recommendation is to start on the seacock, check the seacock, after that strainer, strainer. after that the pump. raw water pump. pump, after that in the changer. No? You follow that path. In some, some part is broken or is clogged. It's common a plastic bag in the bottom, no? Yes. Be a plastic yeah. bag. It could be with our blowers, that calcium that, Correct. that collects on there and it closes it off a little, little, little until you just overheat. When the valve is open for 10 years oh, try to close and uh, you try to close, normally the people broke the handle. Yeah. What is the recommendation in that case? When everything's working fine, work the handles. Yeah. The handles work them once a month, just turn them off, turn move, it on. Move the handles once a month, that's important. Other possibility is a clogged heat exchanger, no? Yeah, mm -hmm. The heat exchanger clogged for uh, for uh, debris, uh, pieces of uh, rubber of uh, impeller, and uh, calcium. You remember yesterday, calcium on the on the pipes. This is, this is common. Or uh, calcium, no, zinc from uh, the, the Sacrificial anode eroded. Yeah. Clogged. Yeah, yeah. Clogged the heat exchanger. Exhaust oval. Exhaust oval. Correct. And, and sometimes you can get that hose, and the hose will look brand new. And but you take it off, and you look inside, it's separated, and the inside would collapse. And you, you can't even see it from the outside, or guess it will be collapsed on the inside. Perfect. What is the symptom? when you have a, a little flow of a raw water or no raw water. What is the, the symptom number one? High exhaust gas temperature. And this is the code that you have in the, in the computer. High exhaust gas temperature. And the engine shut down for that purpose. For that reason, the sensor is located here. Do you remember? At the elbow. That sensor located here at the elbow. The sensor is touching. Oh. This element is too hot is because no raw water is coming out here. It's simple. What is the other symptom? When uh, you have low flow of raw water or nothing. Normally the engine stop, shut down, because uh, this sensor, this sensor send the signal at, and shut down the, the engine. If you don't have that sensor, uh, you have a lot of problems. Right. Okay. Different problems. If you have a, an uh, inboard engine, marine engine with kill cooling system, uh, you don't have that sensor, yeah? There are situations without this sensor. That's, 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 that's important. Normally, the, the switches, the, the coolant temperature switch and oil pressure switch kill directly. This one kill, but uh, this one send a signal to the computer and the computer kill. Oh. Yeah, computer reason. Yeah, the computer also kill for different reasons we are going to analyze later. With what other sensor works this sensor like a partner. This sensor is full partner of other sensor that is pretty close to this one. O2 sensor, the oxygen sensor. They are located pretty close. The people confuse both sensors. But uh, the, the, you remember the oxygen sensor is bolted on the pipe. In your car, you see that sensor? Yeah. In your car, you have two sensors. One before the catalytic converter and other one after, yeah? This sensor and the O2 sensor, they are full brothers. What is the symptom when you have a problem with the coolant pump? No raw water pump, the coolant pump. Uh, I have another question, thank you, Robert. Is possible that uh, my engine is running good, I don't have problems of temperature, but uh, my coolant pump is, is damaged? Yeah. Is when you have a leak, you remember the hole in the bottom of the coolant pump? But the, but the pump is running and the pump pumping good and, and pressurize the system properly, but have a leak. Normally, when the coolant pump start to fail, you see the leaking when the engine is running, but the pump continue running for two months, six months, and it's leaking. For that reason, it's important to check the leaks. I have a pound of uh, coolant, probably is on the coolant pump, and once the system is good, the pressure is good, the temperature is good, but it's leaking. You need to recover periodically, periodically, periodically. Oh, I recover, but the engine is good. That's the coolant pump, okay? Well, I got another scenario. What if 
customer's complaint is, is I'm running the engine, I run it for about 15 minutes and the engine's overheating. Oh, that's good. Excellent. What, what would be the possibilities? Well, it could be the thermostat stuck. Absolutely. The yeah. Thermostat. Yeah. Yeah. This what is else? The raw water pump? Yeah, if it's not pumped. But you go outside. So I'm going to just play out the scenario. So you definitely look outside and you see water pumping out. So is the raw water pump still a problem? The question you should ask is how much slipped. water is coming out the, uh, oh. the exhaust. Book that I think it will tell you. You put it. You take the hose off. You put it in a five-gallon bucket, and so many seconds or something, it's gonna pump so many gallons. Oh, yeah. We do but each that. Pump that's is to measure the volume. Yeah. A circulator pump. It's just a circulating pump. It has no suction to suck water up and just go. Moves it. it has Only to be it. covered with water before it pumps. It's a circulator. It's so all it does. In that case, if the thermostat stays open all the time, in some cases you have black smoke. But in other cases you don't have black smoke, but the odor of the smoke is different because you have incomplete nitrous, phosphorus oxide, sulfur oxide, and the odor is different. I don't have black smoke, but the odor is different. Yeah, it's, it's because the engine is running too cold. The combustion is not complete. The combustion in diesel should, should be at the appropriate pressure and temperature. If the, if the temperature and pressure is the, the pressure and temperature recommended, the explosion is practically complete and the emissions are practically nothing. So let me ask you one more question. So customer's complaint says, hey, I went to check my oil, I got water in the oil. But the engine runs good. Water in the oil. In the oil. The so, oil. But the engine, is, the engine is running. The That's engine good. runs good. And continue running. And continue running, but it's got water in the oil. Where would that water come in from the oil? The oil is milk. It's cool. oil cooler. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because if it had a bad head gasket, it, would it wouldn't run right. Yeah, yeah. Understand? Oh, nice. Nice question. Danny said, the oil is milky, yeah. but the engine continues running. And I don't have wire smoke, but the engine continues running. For milky oil, you have two possibilities. One possibility is salt water on the oil. And other one? Cool. Cool water. Okay, if it's salt water on the oil, the oil smell, that, that's not good. Yeah. And the possibility is on the oil cooler, no? This is because it's salt water. Ah, no, the oil is milky because it's cooler. What is the problem? One possibility is the head gasket is the number one. The second one, yeah. you remember the slips and the, and the rings on the lips? Oh, yeah. You remember? Yeah. The yeah. Other one? crack on the on the cylinder sure. liner sure. what happened if the oil is milky because it's mixed with salt water the engine continue running like Danny said but uh, in a short period of time the babbit on the bearing is gone mm -hmm. if the engine is mixed with coolant you can run the engine one month two months with the oil milky with coolant and the bearings are not destroyed because coolant is lubricant. Salt water, no. Salt water destroyed the bearings in 20 minutes. No, 20 minutes is too much, less. Yeah, because it's salt water. But if it's with coolant, the engine continues running, running, and the oil is milky. If it's salt water mixed with the oil, what is the symptom immediately, 10 minutes later? Pressure. Low oil pressure, the number one, and knocking. knocking. It's clear that uh, the engine lock if salt water enter in the combustion chamber. Yes or no? Yes. If a little amount of coolant enter in the combustion chamber, what happened? Why smoke? Why smoke? smoke? And the engine continue running. But if it's salt water, like Danny said, lock. And you have two possibilities for salt water entering in the combustion chamber. One possibility is. The exhaust. exhaust valves are properly calibrated. For that reason, the calibration is mandatory. Okay? Good. That's the number one. And the second possibility for salt water entering in the combustion yeah. chamber. Crackhead. Uh, broken after cooler. Broken the intercooler or after cooler. And uh, how you know easily if uh, only for a conversation by cell phone that the problem was on uh, on the ex on the exhaust valves uh, are properly calibrated or uh, uh, broken um, intercooler. Only asking questions to the customer. You yeah. ask to the to the customer. Excuse me, 
the problem was during the cranking. Yes, I need crank a lot and suddenly stop. Okay, that's false, exhaust false. No, the engine was running in idle normally and suddenly stopped by itself. That was uh, after cool. Okay, this is the recommendation. The engine was locked today or yesterday? No, today, Mr. Lopez, two hours ago. If it's two hours ago, you can recover the engine. If it's gasoline, you remove the spark plugs and you rotate the engine and you, psh, 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 you push out the water. And after that, you add it through the holes of uh, the, the spark plugs, oil, 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 and you rotate the engine, you rotate the engine, all right? Mm -hmm. If it's diesel, you need to remove the injectors quickly and rotate the engine, put a socket and rotate the engine and push that water out and you recover. No, I am going to do that process tomorrow. Tomorrow is too late. It should be right now. If the water, if the engine says five minutes ago, immediately remove the injectors and try to rotate. No, if you try tomorrow, tomorrow is done. No? Well, yeah, that, that's not possible. We, we call that pickling. We pickle the motors. And after we pickle the motors, the, the whole idea, at least when we get any motors that sunk or, or there's water in the system, we pickle it, we spray the stuff like he says, just rotate it, and then I try to get it to fire up right away. Correct. Because what, what happens is, why would I want to fire it up right away? What, what would, it, get everything try to up. heat up and, like heat it up and burn out the moisture. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. Correct. You're going to watch those mechanical fuel pumps, the diaphragm will go, and gasoline oh, will yeah. go into the oil. Yeah. Through your fuel pump. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one thing, I've on, on, I, I done it myself on outboards. And I had one or two on, on the um, inboard, but the if you got gas in the cylinder and it's locked up, and you take the spark plugs out and you rotate it, make sure you have no spark. Oh, yeah. Do whatever you can, no spark. You turn it over, you blow the gas out of the cylinder, and you get a spark right out of your plug wire. Boom, right up in flame. So by him just saying that, let's say he's asking now. What would you disconnect so you have no spark? Crank position. Crank position. Sensor. Yeah, absolutely. Or cam in some cases. Yeah.